Sheridan College, spring. This is where it all began. My name is King, Edward Arlington King to be exact, and I teach here. I'm a professor of economics. And this is my home, mine and my wife Betty's, that is, and we're spending a normal afternoon at home. I'm working on some papers, and Betty's working on me. Eddie. Hmm? What's a four-letter word meaning a pest of the common household variety? Uh, um, uh, F-L-E-A. No, it begins with a W. W-I-F-E. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. Hey, it fits. Eddie, huh? there, there are two men at the door. They say they're agents. What do you mean, agents? Investigators. Did you get the fender again? No, Is that they're, what? They're not that kind of agents. They want to see you. They're from the government. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that funny? I don't know. Mr. King? Yes. My name's McCoy, Office of Special Investigation. Jerry McCoy, this is my partner, Al Farber. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, a special investigation. I don't get it. We uh, work on a special detail that has to do with locating missing government property or the persons who are responsible for its being missing. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, may we come in? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, please do. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Now, uh, what is all this about? Now, Mr. King, during World War II, you were a senior grade lieutenant in the United States Naval Reserve, serial number 3280900. Oh, oh yeah, that, that's me. Evidently, Mr. King, you didn't turn in some government property at the end of the war. Now, the usual procedure is for the government to send you a letter asking you to see the proper authorities at the nearest naval district office. But for you... Yeah, for you, they sent us all the way from Washington to personally escort you. Mr. King, I don't know what you took, but whatever it was, it must have taken nerve. Oh, incidentally, you're not under arrest. No, we just want you to return to Washington with us to answer some questions. Oh, it's, you travel at government expense, of course. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I never took anything from the Navy. Well, now, now, I suppose he just gave back whatever he took. I mean, he won't go to jail or anything. What are you, what are you trying to do to me? I, I didn't take, I never stole anything from anybody in my life. I mean, uh, what's the matter, Professor? Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing at all. I... Eddie, what is it? Nothing at all. I, I... Just never thought they'd be missed. I mean, we, uh, you know, I didn't think anybody cared. It wasn't like stealing. Eddie, what did you take? Just my 45. And my uh, uh, compass. A personal compass. The, you know, as souvenirs, it's all. You know how you've been on a ship for three years and you... Well, don't sit there and look at me like I was a criminal or something. I mean, everybody took something, didn't they? I don't think they sent us here just for a gun and a compass, Mr. King. All I know is that the Navy wants you in Washington by tomorrow morning. In Washington? The, the stuff is in my mother's attic in Scranton. I, I, I'll just write her and tell her to send it in. Sorry. It'd be me, it'd be okay, but I got nothing to say. Well, this is just... Well, I'm sorry. I can't spare the time right now. It, uh, you said I wasn't under arrest. Suppose I just refused to come. I, uh... I wouldn't do that, Mr. King. That wouldn't be a good idea. Right now, they're asking. Later. Well, uh, uh, suppose he... Uh... Uh, Mrs. King, if Eddie comes with us now, they say it would all save us a lot of inconvenience later. It's a government expense. I'll come. Because I see no reason not to. It's ridiculous. I have nothing to be afraid of. Yes, he seemed to be such a nice boy. Imagine, 20 years of hard labor just for that. It isn't if he had stolen a... May I help you? Agents McCoy and Father to see Captain Beagle. In reference to what, please? 
Lieutenant Edward Arlington King, USNR. Captain Beagle, sir. I told you I didn't want to be disturbed today, Benson. But it's Lieutenant King, sir. Lieutenant King? King? King! In here. You're dismissed. I'll call your chief later in the day. But, sir. Dismissed. Well done. What did he do? Mister, I think you'd better report back to your office. Sit down. You know why you're here, don't you? No, Captain, I don't. Not precisely, no, I don't. Well, I... some government property is missing. And according to the records, it was checked out to you last. Yes, sir. Now, in yes. cases of this kind, there are three alternatives for the accused person. First of oh, all, he may return the property, and there will be no charges made, and everything is forgiven. Yes. Secondly, he may pay the cost. In that case, everything is ship -shaped. Third, he may say that he didn't do it, but he has to prove his case to the satisfaction of the Navy. Then everybody is satisfied, but I'm afraid that <laughs> very seldom happens. Mm -hmm. Now, Lieutenant, I know that lots of the boys took little souvenirs when they left the Navy, but you... Don't you think you went a little too far? I don't know. Captain, I don't know. I am so sorry. I, if I had thought the compass... For instance, I didn't think that would become critical or anything, and then the gun. Go on, King. A little foul weather gear after Ewo. I've just, you know, I took my fight. Well, who wants foul weather gear with a shredded seat? You're trying my patience, Lieutenant. Captain, I can't think of anything else. Honestly, if I could, I would tell you. If you just tell me what's missing, I'll pay for it. You want to play it that way, do you? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll pay. I'd... Yeah, well, I hope the teaching pays well these days. Huh? The total. You can check these items if you like. The new against the used, etc., 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 comes to five million four hundred and fifteen thousand nine zero eight dollars and twenty-one cents. What am I supposed to have taken? One fully equipped, battle-ready, seaworthy destroyer escort. Now, Lieutenant, your Navy doesn't want to be hard on you. Why don't you tell me? What did you do with the USS Cornblatt? I tell you, dear, you should not have come. I couldn't stay home and let you fight this all by yourself. Now, what is it all about? Oh, I told you 20 times already, dear. I was the Cornblatt's last skipper, and the Cornblatt is missing. As far as the Navy's concerned, I got it somewhere. It's ridiculous. What would you do with a battleship? It isn't logical. Where would you yeah. put it? It's not logic, dear. It's just rules and regulations. I've got one week to come up with either the cornblatt or five million dollars. Now, drink your coffee. We've got to go back to the hotel. i got a big day ahead of me. I tell you, Captain, I did yes, not I know, take... Yes, I know. I know. I believe you. If you tell me you didn't take the ship, you didn't take the ship. But records are records, and responsibility is responsibility. Now you find that ship. I'll do my best, sir. You'll have to do better than that. I'm assigning Benson to help you. Lieutenant, you're getting the best man of the Navy. Ensign Benson? Yes, sir. You're on detached service. For the next week, you're new skipper. Good to be aboard, sir. Well, uh, it's good to have you aboard there, Ensign Benson. So we checked. We checked Lend-Lease files and Mothball files, Current files and Dead files. And as if that weren't enough, we checked Lend-Lease ships and Mothball ships, Current ships and dead ships. By the fourth day, we were so tired checking, I was willing to go to Portsmouth Naval Prison for a rescuer. But not Benson. Oh, boy, she'd been a perfect brick through it all. That girl wasn't going to give up for anything. 
Lieutenant, let's be practical. We've got three days to go, and so far we've uncovered nothing. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Benson. Let's drop the whole thing off lead insanity. No, sir. What I mean is, let's start from the beginning. From the day you brought the ship in, what happened? The day I brought the ship in, what? what, what uh, I brought the ship in in June of 46 into San Diego Harbor. About 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. Was the crew detached? Oh, yeah. Well, the entire crew was sent to either separation or reassignment centers. You know, I stayed on board an extra day to get all the papers ship shape so I could turn the ship over to the proper authorities. Were you alone? Mm, no, they... Oh, they detailed a yeoman, second class, to help. They detailed a yeoman, second class, to help me. What was his name? Ah, ooh, um, uh, uh, Seymour, uh, uh, Cyril, it's, uh, uh, Cy, um, uh, Cecil. No, it wasn't Cecil. It was, uh, uh, uh it was just like Cedric. Cedric. Yeah, Wachinski. Hello, Sue Rita. Listen, I want you to do me a big favor. In June of 46, there was a second-class yeoman named Cedric Wachinski. Anyway, honey, Benson gets on the phone and traces this guy to Chicago, you see? Only she finds out he hasn't lived in Chicago since 1948, but his ex-wife says she thinks he's now in New York because he used to manage a fighter named William the Conqueror. So anyway, then Benson gets on the phone. This Benson must be quite a gal. Who? Benson. Is Benson pretty? Yeah, she, she's a real knockout. Are you listening to me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyhow, to make a long story short, we're going to meet this fella in a restaurant right next to Stillman's Gym in New York tomorrow morning. Who? Wojcicki. No, I mean, who's meeting him? Well, Benson and I, of course. We're going to get the 6 o'clock plane in the morning, and what is the matter with you? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Except while you're gallivanting all over the country with a beautiful way, Benson, I sit here with nothing to do except go to the movies. You know how many movies I've seen in the last four days? Three. I'll tell you, I saw eight. Eight, eight times two. That's 16 pictures well, I've honey, seen. Well, I'm very sorry, but you know the trouble we've got. We've got to check everybody and everything, and I didn't ask you to come here in the front. What are you doing? I'm still talking to you. Honey, you, you'd better get to bed. I, I wouldn't want you to keep that way waiting. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. By seven, we were in New York, with Benson and I. Of course, Betty apologized for being so upset the night before. Well, you know, eight double features in four days, I mean, it's understandable. Anyway, at 8.30 sharp, we were sitting over coffee with Cedric Wachinski, who ate as if breakfast were going out of style. So you remember Lieutenant King, Mr. Wachinski? Mm, call me Cedric, baby. All my friends do. Pass the butter, huh? Sure, I remember you, Lou. This was one of the last jobs I did before getting out myself. The ship was a, a corn blot. Ha <laughs> memory like an elephant. That's what makes me such a good fight manager. Why, I remember every punch my fighters ever took. Just so that in the next one, they won't do it again. Only trouble is, they don't remember. And do you like fights, beautiful? I abhor them. Oh, a real fan, huh? Well, I'll send you a couple of tickets for the next one. The kid will... Cedric, we're in an awful rush. Oh, sure, sure, Lute. Uh, the cream, huh? Mr. Wachinski. When Lieutenant King turned over his ship, do you remember to whom he did it? Insane. Well, why no. not? Well, I wasn't there, Lou. Look, I remember perfectly. I finished up the papers, handed them to you, shoved off, and you said it was okay that you take care of the rest. You don't remember a junior grade lieutenant came on board when you were changing, no? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I did see one walk on board just as I was shoving off. It was the tall, skinny kid with an Adam's apple. That's the fellow. What was his name? I don't know. Why, did the ship get lost or something? Ah! Ship get lost. Hey, that's a funny one, huh? Ain't it, baby? Ship get lost or something. Ah! <laughs> I'll tell you, Benson, it's no use. All these Adam's apples look alike to me, huh? Lieutenant, somewhere above one of these Adam's apples is the face of the man who took your ship. Now try again. It's not in. It's Benson. Oh, I see. What is it? Wait a minute. Something happened? What, uh, for, uh, hello, is Lieutenant King here? I know, Eddie. What are you doing? Oh, I'm looking at Adam's apples. You're doing what? I'm, I'm screening photographs, dear. Of Adam's apples? With Benson? Uh, well, I'll explain when I see you. When will that be? Well, I don't know exactly. I, 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 why don't you go to a movie? I've been to one. Well, go to another one. They're better than ever. Oh, 
that, 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 that is familiar. That could be him. That, no, that, you, maybe that could be him. That could be the fellow. That, Look, his name is Gumshocker. He, yeah. He's still in the Navy. He's a commander stationed in Washington. Lieutenant, he's right downstairs. Let's go. Then you found me by checking the photos of all the men who were Lieutenant J.G.'s back in June of 46. Huh? Actually, that was Ensign Benson's idea, sir. Mm, commendable. Hmm? Admirable, in fact. I congratulate you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. There's only one flaw. Sir? I've never been to San Diego in my life. But, Lieutenant, <laughs> that's the funniest story I ever heard in my life. You lost it, D.E. You little... <laughs> <laughs> Captain, we even sent telegrams to every nation that ever got any Lend-Lease or aid from the Marshall Plan, or... I know. To the commander of the South Zanzibar Navy. Do you by any chance remember receiving from the United States among various and sundry items one destroyer escort? If so, please come. Oh, that's bad phrasing, Lieutenant. That's very bad phrasing. You should have started out paragraph one, subject, destroyer escort Kornblatt, 00674. Paragraph two. Oh, well. It doesn't matter now. Where's Benson? Uh, oh, she's on the phone, sir. Now, what's she doing? Well, she's calling all the junior sea sprout squadrons to see if the Navy ever gave them a DE as a training ship. <laughs> Determination of steel, that girl. She'll go places in this man's Navy. Yes, sir. Captain, what do you think is going to happen to me? I don't know, my boy. We have no precedent. We have nothing to go by. We're making history. Do you realize that you're the first man in naval history to ever steal a U.S. warship? I did not steal that ship. You know that. Yes, I know. I know, but the records don't, and that's what counts. Uh, what happens tomorrow at the Naval Inquiry, I don't know. I can recommend leniency, but we can only hope. Oh, I Excuse tell me, you... Sir. Lieutenant, we might what? have hit Pater. What do you mean? What, what, what do you... The junior sea sprouts. One of their commodores is in your office downstairs oh, right do, now. Do you think there's a possibility? I mean, is this likely that... Ask him. Yeah, I, yeah pardon me. <laughs> Mighty nice of you to come down here and help me, son. Son? I'm Commodore Theodore Perch. Sit down. So you're the jackass who lost a destroyer. Well, hey, well wait a minute. What's you're... the matter? Don't you know your Navy reg? Well, yeah, I know the Navy regulations, but mistakes can be made. Not in the, the Navy, except perhaps when they signed you up. So you commanded a DE during the war. Yeah. Where'd you get your training? Purdue. No wonder the Air Force is gaining an ascendancy. What do you do now, Lieutenant? Teach. Teach? What do you teach? Well, I should be teaching manners to children like you who storm into offices and make spectacles out of you. Now, listen to me. Do you know where the cornblad is? No. Well, what are you doing here? I only wanted to meet the guy who was stupid enough to lose it. I'll kill him. So we thought that possibly your government might know where it is. Cornblad. Yes, the cornblad. He speaks English. Do you understand what I am saying? Oh, yes, yes, yes. English. Yes. Corn blanc. Yes, the corn He doesn't understand a word I'm saying. Try French. F uh, do you speak, uh, parlez-vous le français? Ah, mais oui, ah. oui, naturellement. Oui. Corn blanc. Yes, uh, le corn, now, le ship. Le, le bateau de Guillaume uh, des Etats-Unis, le corn blanc. Corn blanc. Uh, corn blanc. Uh, Avez-vous le corn blanc? Corn blanc. Yeah, with, yeah, I don't think he speaks a word of French either. Comprenez-vous? Mais oui, oui. You wish to purchase from my government a ship of the Kornblatt class. Almost. What are you doing? What are you all dressed for? I'm going with you to the court of inquiry. Well, what for? Does he mean get hung? No, come on. Now, Benson and I will have enough to do. Benson, that's all I've heard since I oh, came please, here. Oh, please, dear, don't start that again. You know I've got enough of money. Why don't you go to a movie? <laughs> Where are you going? To Reno. Reno? Oh, don't get dramatic on me now. You're going to leave a sinking ship? Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake.
ticket and your change. Betty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dear. Look, now, you can't leave me. I'll get down to my hands and knees. I'll chew grass for 20 years. I don't care, but you can't leave me. How much time do I have, please? About 45 minutes, ma'am. 45 well, minutes? There's a newsreel theater over there if you'd like to pass the time in peace. Thank With you. The... That's my wife. Rocket program. In August of 1946, 250 miles off the coast of Southern California. Pardon me. Betty, I'm sorry. Betty, look, dear, please be reasonable. I'm sorry. Dear, please listen to me, will you? I didn't mean, I didn't mean to. I, I... Experimental rocket missile to the uninitiated. That's all I need, the Navy. Two-stage jet-propelled weapons is being given its tryout under simulated battle conditions. Dear, please come outside and... Here. There you see the rocket missile being launched at the target ships. Outmoded destroyers and cruisers. Oh, please, be quiet. Dear, will you please you listen to... You be quiet. Sorry. Dear, you're the only thing that means anything to me. Look, Lester, I'm watching the Navy blow up. If you want to, Nick, go somewhere else. Oh, please. Meg, it's my wife. Listen, dear, they're holding a board of inquiry right now. I'm not even there. I don't care. I don't care about Beagle. I don't care about Ensign Benson. I don't care about that, that, that Cornblatt. I don't care about anything but you. I love you. I love you, too. That's all I want to hear. It's by the very men who once walked their decks and fired their guns. Your wife? I don't care about anything, just as long as the corn blast. The USS Cornblatt goes down. Say, Stubby, let me ask you something. Did you steal a DE for those rocket tests of yours back in 46? He stole it right out from under the nose of a kid with a bad example? <laughs> oh, man, that's rich. <laughs> okay, Stubby. Yeah, next Thursday night at the club. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Goodbye, old man. <laughs> that's Stubby. He gets away with murder. Well, I don't think it's so funny, Captain. Oh, now, wait a minute. You don't mean to tell me that you're going to be one of those fellows who's a stickler for procedure, who pays attention to little details. <laughs> I admit that Stubby was a bit presumptuous to steal a D.E., but around here we call that initiative. <laughs> Anyhow, we're all ship shape, ready to go to sea, far enough. Pull up the anchors, cast off the lines, full speed ahead. And that's you too, young lady. Thank you, Captain. Initiative? Pairden College, fall. We were spending a normal afternoon at home. I'm working on some papers. Betty's working on me. Betty? Huh? What's that six-letter word meaning? Now, Lieutenant, about that gun and compass.